Hey, what's up guys and welcome to my magic training guide. In this video I'm going to show you a lot of different methods to train your magic. I will start at level 1 briefly, but most of this video will be focused on higher level methods since that's when the training gets more interesting and varied. I'm going to show you guys 8 different viable methods to take you all the way to level 99, tell you guys the pros and cons of each method, and leave the rest up to you. There isn't any one correct way to train magic because there are so many options and different people train it with different goals in mind. In this video, I will offer an option that will be suitable to pretty much any interest, whether it be cost effectiveness, AFKness, combat versus non combat, or high efficiency. Thanks for watching the video, and I hope you guys enjoy. So, from level 1 magic, you want to start off by casting a few wind strikes. You just need to cast enough of these to get to level 3 magic, and then you can start using confuse, and then weaken, and then curse. And this is how I would recommend getting your magic level up to 43 until you can start superheating. Um, from level 3 onwards, just splash confuse and then splash curse once you hit 19, you know, weaken at 11. Um, basically the reason you want to splash instead of actually successfully casting is because if you successfully cast, then you can't cast it again uh, until the opponent's stats have drained back, or I guess uh, restored back up again. Because what these spells do is they drain the uh, attack, strength, defense stats of your opponent. Um, so if you never actually succeed the spell, then you can continually cast it, and you don't get any more experience if you succeed versus fail the spell anyways, so it's just as good to fail the spell if all you care about is experience. So in order to be able to fail the spell 100% of the time, you need to have uh, at least negative 65, or I guess at most negative 65 magic attack bonus. Uh, you can achieve this by just wearing a full set of plate armor, a set of vambraces, and uh, with a staff equipped as well. If you don't have a staff equipped, then you'll have even lower magic bonus and you don't need to bring the vambraces. Um, in free to play, there are in members there are other items so you don't need to wear vambraces, so you can wear like metal boots and stuff like that to drain your magic offense even more. In free to play there isn't, so the vambraces would be the only option, so you would need 40 range to be able to splash perfectly, but you won't you won't succeed very often even if you have negative 55 and no vambraces, so you can still do this and you might just succeed every so often. Uh, and in that case, maybe you just want to bring some combat runes and kill the monster that you're splashing on if you actually succeed or just start casting a different uh, spell. But it doesn't last too long and it'll work out just fine. And another option is just to stop using a staff and you'll still succeed 100% of the time, even without the van braces, or I guess you'll fail 100% of the time, and it'll just cost a little bit more because you need to use some more runes. So basically what you do with this is... Uh, this is a convenient one because he's always safe spotted, but you just want to safe spot any monster, and this is in the Varak Castle. Uh, you just cast a spell in it, and you can cast one of these spells every 5 ticks, and so casting Curse at 29 XP each is about 37k XP per hour in total. Um, so it'll take you like a little bit over an hour, maybe an hour and a half at most, to get to level 43 magic doing this. A little bit boring, but it's not really too bad, it's kind of a similar deal to Alking, you just have to move your mouse a bit. Um, so not the most exciting way to do it, but it's probably the easiest and the cheapest. You will need just shy of 2,000 body runes, and if you don't have a mud staff, then you'll need uh, about 4,000 uh, water runes if you're doing curses most of the way through. And that's pretty much it for the introductory magic level, just getting up to 43, and from here onwards we will start the methods that actually are fairly decent to get all the way to 99. From level 43 onwards, you can use the superheat item spell, and this can be cast on any ores that would be turned into bars. It uses one nature rune and five fire runes, so you want to wear a staff that it gives you unlimited fire runes and keep nature runes in your inventory. The most popular things to superheat are gold ores because you can use goldsmith gauntlets and get pretty decent smithing XP per cast, and you only, you can use an entire inventory of ores, whereas with most types of bars you need to withdraw multiple different types of ores and you can only superheat a few per inventory, which would definitely slow down the XP a bit. In order to superheat gold ores, you should definitely do the Family Crest quest, because then you can get goldsmith gauntlets, and these increase the smithing XP you get per gold ore by over twice as much, from 22.5 to 56.2, I believe it is, so much, much better, and I definitely wouldn't superheat gold unless you have these. So you can't do this if you have really low combat, but Family Crest is a really easy quest, and I would definitely get it done uh, before doing this. Of course, you also need the smithing level to smith whatever, or to smelt whatever bars you're going to smelt with the spell, so you need 40 uh, smithing to be able to do gold. If you're in free-to-play, I'd recommend doing iron ores. They're cheaper overall and just really bad smithing XP, but there's still some smithing XP and the magic XP per hour will remain the same regardless of what uh, ores you are smelting. So this used to be a really, really popular method because you could get about 100k magic and 100k uh, smithing, like slightly higher than that, but 
around their uh, XP per hour. So total it was about 200k XP per hour. It was pretty decent uh, cost effectiveness for both magic and smithing. And uh, people used to use this to get all the way to level 99 in both. Nowadays people use magic and view most for the most part. High, high efficiency people use magic and view for magic and use things like Addy Plates or Blast Furnace to train smithing, but it's still a pretty nice method at least to get yourself from 43 to 55, if nothing else, in magic. And as far as cost, it is fairly expensive if you do gold. Uh, it's like 10 GP per XP if you're only thinking about the magic XP, but it's about 5 GP per XP for the total XP, and it's definitely worth taking into consideration the smithing XP you get because it is quite good. So yeah, I would definitely say that this is the best way to train your magic from 43 until 55 at least and even higher if you want to train uh, magic and smithing together and it's a really nice method it did a bit of clicking but not really too difficult and pretty straightforward for level 55 magic onwards you can use high level alchemy which is a spell that turns items into coins and different items of course alk for different values it uses one nature rune and five fire runes so you want to use a staff that gives fire runes for it and bring nature runes in your inventory it gives 65 xp per cast and can be cast every five ticks meaning that Perfect tick if you're just standing still and alking is 78k XP per hour. I wouldn't recommend just standing still and alking because it's fairly inefficient overall. The best way to train magic in the long run is to do it through multi-skilling. So as you can see what I'm doing right now, I'm alking items well, running around the Ardoin agility course, and I would say agility is one of the easiest skills to multi-skill magic during. A lot of people use magic imbue and some people use alk as well, especially Iron Men to alk items that they collect and craft. Casting high level alchemy at the Ardoin course is around 35k XP per hour if you get all the alks that you possibly can, from what I could tell. Uh, you can also use it at any agility course just as well, and it'll be similar XP per hour in the region of probably 30 to 40k. Um, this is slower magic XP per hour, of course, but it means you're still getting efficient agility XP. So basically, you could go for you know 78k an hour at magic and get zero agility, or you could get an efficient hour of agility every hour plus. 35 to 40k magic as well. So overall, it's more efficient if you care about macro efficiency and total XP and, and thinking in the going for max mindset. And agility is just one skill that you can alk during. You can alk during a lot of different skills if you choose to. Uh, it could be anything that you're running, so also questing, but I think even things like woodcutting, fishing, uh, mining, hunter, stuff like that, you probably could alk during if you really wanted to, and it wouldn't really be too difficult. Um, you'll see later on once you get to higher magic and lunars that you can use magic and B, which is kind of an easier and a little bit slower version of this, uh, easy to multi-skill with other skills, but yeah, basically with alking you can choose whether you want to sit at a bank and get no other XP and get higher magic XP per hour, or do it during other skills and be more macro efficient. I'd say alking is the best method to get magic XP if you're caring about total efficiency until level 82 when you can start imbuing, or straight through to 99 if you prefer it. It generally is cheaper to cast uh, high level alchemy than it is to use magic imbue these days, but uh, it totally depends on what items you choose to alk. In this clip I'm alking Addy plate bodies, which are nearly break even on the cost of nature runes, which is really good, but of course the downside is that they cost almost 10k each, so you need to have a lot of money to be able to buy them in large quantities, and they are restricted by buy limits as well. Popular items to alk are um, like longbows such as you and magic longbows, um, dragon hide items, addy plates, battle staves, rune items, stuff like that. There's a lot of different items you can alk, and you can probably find alchemy calculators out there that will tell you good items to alk, but usually if you find an item that seems really good, it probably is limited by uh, a low buy limit or not too many supply in the game. Um, but things like you and magic longbows are always safe bets because you can get them in high quantities and you don't lose too much money. Oftentimes you can at least get like 50 to 100 GP back on the 300 GP for the Nietzsche rune so that it ends up costing about 3 to 4 GP per XP is pretty standard and if you have a lot of cash you might be able to bring it down to 1 to 2 GP per XP which is fairly cheap. So from a maximum efficiency standpoint you would alk until 82 or 99 depending on your preference and then switch to magic imbue which is a spell that you get on the lunar spellbook at level 82 magic. It uses two astral runes and then seven water and fire runes, so you want to have a steam battle staff or some kind of steam staff equipped for the spell because it gives you the unlimited water and fire runes, and that way you only have to use two astral runes to cast the spell. It gives 86 experience per cast, and you can cast it once every 12.6 seconds or 21 game ticks. Um, so there's a fairly lengthy delay between casts, and it means that it maxes out at around uh, 24k XP per hour roughly, and it will be slightly different depending on what skill you're doing it during. 
the purpose of the spell and the reason people use it is because it's easy to just bring Astral Runes and a Steam Staff and cast it while doing a lot of other activities without any lost time. In this clip, as you can see, I am just using it three times per lap at the Ardoin Agility Course, and it's one of the most common places to use Magic Imbue. You can get about 20k per hour magic for every 60k agility you get here, and it just adds up over time and is a pretty easy and simple way to get magic XP without any extra time spent while going for other goals. You can cast it during a ton of other skills. Um, the actual use of the spell is for runecrafting, so you use it while crafting combination runes like lava runes. Um, you can also cast it during mining, fishing, hunter, agility as I said, thieving, farming, slayer, fire making, and construction. All pretty easy to use magic imbue during and not lose any time. So you can choose which skills you want to imbue during. You don't need to imbue during all of these skills to get enough magic XP in comparison to the rest of your skills. Um, agility is probably the easiest one and you can easily just be casting it while doing your farm runs since you are on loaners anyways. I would recommend prioritizing skills where you can wield a steam staff and bring the runes without any lost XP. So things like Slayer where you're not wielding a steam staff, it's going to cost a little bit more because you have to bring the elemental runes. So whether you or not you want to actually do that is really up to you, but I prefer not to because you can get enough magic XP during only skills where you wield a steam staff. Such as mining, uh, I've done lots of mining of course and I've gotten a lot of magic XP in the process. Things like fire making for sure, construction is pretty easy, especially if you're doing uh, oak dungeon doors, I remember doing that a bit. There's tons of options for imbuing and that's the most macro efficient way to do it, either imbue or continue to alk. Alking's a bit more effort and a bit more uh, involved and you have to be on regular magics which is inconvenient for farm runs. Uh, imbue is a bit more costly and a bit more simple basically. From here onwards, I'm going to be showing you guys a lot of other methods that are not technically macro efficient, but are still good ways to train magic. Um, I'm going to show you guys the best way to train magic through combat and a few other non-combat spells that are pretty useful to uh, use if you actually want to be focusing on magic training and not just doing it while multi-skilling and getting kind of slow rates. So a fairly popular method of training magic on the regular magic spellbook is stun elking, and this is once again one where you need to have the negative 65 magic bonus because you are going to be splashing the stun spell on any NPC that you choose, which requires level 80 magic for that, and then of course 55 for alking. The alking range is obviously the same, you can decide what items you want to alk, you bring your uh, nature runes, and you will need to bring fire runes or lava runes, um, because you do need to have, to have uh, water and earth runes for stunning, and you want to bring a mud staff for that, so you'll need to use water, uh, sorry, you'll need to use fire runes, and then you'll need to bring soul runes for the stuns, and uh, nature runes for the alks. Basically with this method you are combining stunning and alking so that they are both uh, happening within a 5 tick timer instead of just the alking happening within a 5 tick timer, so it's more clicking and a bit more involved but noticeably faster XP per hour. I believe it maxes out somewhere around 180 to 190 k XP per hour which is a really really solid rate and it's not really that expensive because alking as you remember is anywhere between like 1 and 4 GP per XP depending on what items you choose to use. And stunning is only about 2 GP per XP, it costs about 180 GP for a soul rune, uh, thanks to the fact that you can now runecraft them, and uh, it gives about 90 XP for every uh, stun cast. So this is a pretty cheap magic method, it's pretty fast XP per hour, and I guess the only downside to some people would be that it's fairly click intensive and you have to stay focused on it, but really nice way to go for training magic and it's definitely one of the best ones out there. Next up is String Jewelry, this one once again requires 80 magic and is on the Lunar Magic spellbook gives 83 experience per cast in magic and 4 crafting xp per cast and it will use up 2 astral runes and then you bring a mud staff to provide the elemental runes. This is by far the most straightforward afkable magic training method because once you cast it it will do an entire inventory for you. Um, so if you want to afk magic this is probably the best way to go other than maybe doing it through combat. It's about 130 to 150k XP per hour, I would say, depending on how much attention you pay and how quickly you, how quickly you bank. Um, and it's it's pretty decent. Uh, it is kind of expensive, around 6 to 7 GP per XP right now, which is fairly costly, but for the AFK-ness it's not too bad. It's probably best to string regular gold amulets because they're cheap to buy, and I looked at the margins for various other amulets and they're pretty much the same, if not worse, so generally people do go with gold amulets to string. Um, Pretty straightforward, pretty simple, just a nice AFK magic method and uh, decent XP per hour as well. Alright, the next spell on the list is called Tan Leather. It's on the Lunar Magic spellbook and requires 78 magic to use, and it uses two Astro Runes and one Nature Rune. You also need to complete Fremenic Hard Diary to be able to use this spell, 
uh, so keep that in mind as well. Not crazy requirements for that, but you do have to get those done. This spell is really, really good because it is actually profitable when you're casting it. it you turn untanned dragon leathers into tanned, and you, it makes five per cast, and that turns into some pretty nice profit. Um, you can actually make like three to four GP per XP while training magic and still getting like 130k XP per hour. And if you want to, you can also add imbues in there without any lost time, get more like 150k an hour, and you'll be losing a little bit of money there, but still profiting overall. So it's pretty similar in terms of XP per hour to string jewelry, except you're making money instead of losing money, and the only difference is that you have to actually pay a bit of attention instead of AFKing. So it's a really, really nice way to train magic, and I don't know if a whole lot of people use this spell, but it's really, really good, and I would say this is the best way to train magic if you're not um, going to use imbue or alk while doing other skills unless you just have a lot of money to throw around and really don't care. But the fact that you can actually make profit while still getting good magic XP is something that is very, very uncommon and pretty much unique to this spell as far as I know of anyways. The next spell is pretty interesting but probably not viable long term due to not having much supply in the game of raw pies, but it is the Bake Pie spell. Uh, it gives 60 XP in magic per cast plus the cooking XP for what you get for cooking the pie normally. Um, so you see pretty big XP drops. If you're making summer pies, then you get 320 XP drops, so 60 for magic and 260 for cooking. It's basically the same thing as string jewelry in terms of AFK, and it's a bit lower XP in magic per cast, so not great magic XP, but the cooking XP per hour is actually really, really high, and the total XP per hour is really good. Um, it's comparable to making wines and a bit more expensive. The cooking XP for raw summer pies with the prices I was able to get was about 2 GP per XP, which isn't that bad. And then the magic XP was more like 4 GP per XP, because I believe it uses 2 astro runes for the cast. Um, so it's an interesting spell, and it could be a nice way to do cooking and magic together if you want to, but it's probably not going to be too, too viable for really doing it in large quantities, because raw summer pies are not a high volume item, and it will probably take a while to get them in huge bulk. But it's something interesting and worth considering anyways. Um, it's yeah, it's pretty nice XP per hour overall. I mean, getting 320 XP drops every three ticks while being AFK, that's, that's a lot of total XP, but probably not viable for all of your magic XP, I wouldn't say. So the last magic training method that I would say is actually pretty viable is training it through combat using the ancient magics, mainly bursting or barraging. Most likely bursting, because barraging is a lot more expensive, and uh, bursting only requires 70 magic, whereas barraging requires 90. As far as the gear setup, you just want to get max magic bonus or whatever you can afford. This isn't fully max magic bonus that I have in this clip, but it's pretty close. I don't have an arcane, I don't have a tormented bracelet, and I don't have a 3rd age mage hat, but other than that, this is pretty much max. As far as the inventory, it depends which spot you're using. The best spot to use is the new Monkey Madness 2 place, and for this you just want a light source, bring a stamina, like one prayer potion, a holy wrench probably, and a rune pouch with the runes that you need and probably teleport out would be a good thing to have too. You don't actually need to use prayer potions there because they drop one dose prayer pots uh, more frequently than you actually drink a dose, so you don't. You basically have unlimited prayer there. It's really, really, really good there uh, if you have the quest ready to go. If you can't do Monkey Madness 2 for whatever reason, then the best spot to burst or barrage would be still on Ape Atoll in the southern, island, in the southern part of the island on the dungeon there, killing these skeleton monkeys. Uh, you can probably find other videos showing that, but it's fairly straightforward, um, but by far the best spot is the Monkey Madness 2 spot, killing the maniacal monkeys, the melee ones. The way that you actually get to this spot is different for every person, because the maze is randomized for every person, but you get there by going to the northwestern part of the Ape Atoll, going down the dungeon, and you follow the agility course for a bit. You don't want to go into the hole right near the entrance, um, because there isn't any large area there, so you want to find the second checkpoint uh, dungeon area, basically and run through there a bit and you'll come across a nice wide open room which is really really good for multi-target attacks so bursting barraging or chinning basically all you need to do once you get there is just pray melee and you can use mystic might because you will still get enough per potion doses on the ground to be able to use that and you there's no point in keeping extras because you want to fill your inventory with rune scimitars since that's the other thing that they drop that's worth picking up so using this spot, you get a lot of your money back. You don't get all of it back, but you get a lot of it back from the rune scimitars. You can choose for yourself whether you want to bank them. Your inventory fills up within about an hour, and you're going to have to go and bank. My inventory setup here isn't optimal because I could have had a rune pouch and not taken all the items there, but yeah, it'll, it'll fill up in about an hour, and you can choose whether you want to bank those.
If you do, then you're getting about 400k GP per hour back for all those rune scimitars, so that's pretty good. It's probably worth doing unless you have a lot of money to throw around. In terms of the XP per hour, the ice bursting worked out to be about 230 to 250k an hour, depending on how much you pay attention, how uh, high your magic is, and also how good your gear is. But probably minimum of like 200k an hour if you don't have really high magic or really good gear. Uh, ice barraging was more like 300 to 350k an hour, depending on once again your magic level and your gear. Uh, so noticeably faster, definitely, and it's definitely worth looking into the cost uh, as to whether which like which one is more worth doing. From what I could tell, if you do actually pick up rune scimitars and bank them, it's about 3 GP per XP for bursting, which is actually really cheap. And that's the only reason it's that cheap is because you, a you don't need to use per pots, and b you're getting money back from the rune scimitars. And you can actually also pick up P++ uh, Addy Arrows, which might sell for a bit. I was thinking of trying to pick those up for a little while, and that could bring a little bit of GP back as well. For barraging, if you choose to bank the scimitars and everything, it'll be a minimum of about 5 GP per XP, so even then, still cheaper than String Jewelry and like twice the XP per hour of String Jewelry, so, and still just as AFK, so definitely a better method overall to do this than String Jewelry if you want to AFK magic. You get more XP, you get some combat XP, and uh, it's cheaper, so yeah, it's really good. I imagine that rune, I mean, already runes are going up in price a bit because this spot is new and it's definitely a lot more powerful than the old spot for doing this because it's so much cheaper and just simpler. Um, another downside is that it's really crowded in here right now. I was in World 61, which is a 2k total world, and luckily found an open spot here, but yeah, it's pretty packed right now, especially since uh, Dovidas just made a video about it as well, and it's probably going to stay pretty packed because it's a really good spot, so yeah, I'm not sure exactly how bad it'll get, but you could end up having to hop a lot of times, or maybe it would be possible to be here with multiple people per world, but I kind of doubt it would be as good, so... Yeah, it might be questionable in that aspect, but either way, this is by far the best way to train magic through combat if you can uh, use this spot, and overall the fastest magic XP per hour of any method by quite a bit, other than maybe some obscure, uh, not really viable methods that I don't think are even really worth mentioning. Um, oh yeah, and one more thing that's worth mentioning is that as far as the uh, main hand weapon, the Master Wand is the best one if you want to AFK. Technically, Toxic Staff of the Dead is the best DPS, and if you actually feel like manually casting, then you will get higher XP rates, but the only weapons that can auto-cast Ancients are Master Wand and Ancient Staff. Um, so yeah, you might be able to get like 10-15% faster XP per hour with uh, the Toxic Staff of the Dead, but yeah, it's going to be actual like effort, like you have to continually click, so it's kind of like splashing, you know, Curse or whatever in terms of effort. So that's about all I have for this video, a few honorable mentions of methods that aren't really too great that might be something that you'd think about doing anyways are plank making, which is basically the same XP per hour as tan leather and costs a bit, so kind of out of the picture now. Uh, fire wave alking, you can kill things like metal dragons with fire, fire wave and alk at the same time. Might be decent, but stun alking is probably better. Uh, making teleport tabs is a really AFK way to do magic and make some money, but it's really slow XP per hour so probably not really worth doing. And uh, Super Glass Make is something that is probably good for Iron Man, I would think at least, and can get decent rates, but nothing really too amazing and not really worth doing. But those are a few other magic methods that you might sometimes see people doing. But this video has gone on for quite a long time. Hope you guys enjoyed it. I didn't expect it to go quite this long, but there was a lot of stuff to cover. So hopefully this gives you guys a good picture of what to do to train your magic. And good luck. Thanks for watching. Drop a like if you enjoyed, and I will see you guys all later.